yeah, it doesn't work. And it's all her fault. Well, that Agnes is dead, but can we do anything about it? That chip came out of the A500 Plus that we repaired a couple of months ago. Do you remember the one that had really heavy battery damage? Well, we did get it going at that time. But then, about two, three weeks ago, when we put together the A2000E ATX, we took that whole chipset off the battery damaged board, stuck it into the A2000, and nothing happened. As it turned out, the Agnes chip, it seems to have failed. It's now in this Amiga 500. The chipset from this wound up in the Amiga 2000, but I do want this to be working again. So let's see if we can resurrect the fat lady. So the symptoms, as you've seen at the very start, part of the machine on, you do get a video signal, but just a black screen. Very occasionally, you will get a green screen. So that gives me some hope that there is some signs of life within our chip here. It's not totally dead and I'm hopeful that we can bring it back. Now it has been in and out of this socket a couple of times. I have already given it a clean but I think the first thing we'll do is just go over it one more time with the fiberglass pen just to be 100% sure that our problem is not being caused by a bit of corrosion and a bad contact. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. All the pins are pretty clean, but we will just give it a quick going over with the fiberglass pen. You know what? Those have came up a lot brighter than they were before we started. You can see the dirt on the tip of the fiberglass pen. Just going to give it a very quick going over with a bit of IPA as well. Just to remove any dust or anything. Hopefully this will eliminate any possible uh, connectivity issues. There's quite a bit of dirt coming off that, isn't there? I think it would be worth just doing the same to the socket. And so let's see if this works. Okay, is it as simple as that? No. The next thing I want to try is to give this chip a bath in some white vinegar. Now you might ask yourself, what is the point in that? Well, this was recommended to me by one of the guys on Discord, Sparks UK. You maybe heard me mention his name before a few times, but supposedly he has had some luck reviving dead chips, in particular chips that have died because of leaky battery acid mess all over them. And I certainly think that is the reason for this one's sudden demise. So we'll pop it in there, leave it for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. I'm sure it's hardly going to make it any worse and I don't think the white vinegar will certainly do any damage itself not in that short time period so let's just see if this does anything at all. So while that's been steeping in there I had a quick chat with the guy I got the other A500 plus board from the board that this came out of. Just wanted to see if he maybe had any photos of that board in its original state and he did but it maybe seems that this Agnes chip maybe seems that this didn't actually suffer that bad of uh, corrosion and most of the corrosion as you can see on the photo well it was limited to in the around the battery area but Agnes is finished in her spa bath so let's get her back into the socket and see if this makes any difference. This is a slightly bent pin there. So has a little bath in white vinegar, cured our sickly Agnes. Nope. So the next part of the plan is to pull out the logic probe. We're going to go around the pins of the chip here 
see if there's anything floating, in particular anything floating on an output, and if indeed there is, that might suggest a problem internally on the chip on that particular pin. So looking all around this, the entire data bus is dead, floating, absolutely nothing happening on it whatsoever, which is something that I really didn't expect to find. But it's something I just want to test very quickly. Let's just pull Agnes out again. And I'm going to take Agnes out of the Amiga 2000 build. This is the one that was, was originally in this board. And you can see I did have to carry out a repair on this chip once upon a time. And there was a leg broken off it. So I really don't like taking this one in and out of sockets because that leg I put on there, that's just soldered on and there's every chance that could snap off again. But I just want to put this in here just to confirm that, you know, it definitely is the Agnes, isn't it? It's definitely Agnes is the problem. Um... We're still just getting that black screen. Just let me test this quickly in the Amiga 2000 again. I have changed things up in here ever so slightly since the last time you've seen it. We now have the ATX extension cable in place, freeing up access to the Zorro slots. But the biggest change in here is hiding underneath this. I have put the Pi Storm in here now. Do excuse the HDMI cable disappearing through the back of the case like that. I have ordered a panel mount HDMI cable and the intention will be to take that from there onto the IO plate that was 3D printed at the back here. That will hopefully just make things a bit neater. But let's see if Agnes works in here. And yes, it looks like the machine's booting. It's reading off the drive. And yeah, that's fine. Well, that's a little embarrassing, isn't it? Because I thought our Agnes was bad and uh, it seems like there's nothing wrong with it. But there must be something wrong in one of these other customs. You know, the one that was really heavily corroded was Gary. So let's pull Gary out of the 2000. Stick it in there and see if that makes the difference. There it is. Does that make the difference? I don't believe this. It's Gary. It's Gaz. He's dead. I'm afraid I owe Agnes an apology. Yeah, it doesn't work. And it's all his fault. Well, that Gary is dead, but can we do anything about it? You know, I was so, so sure the fault was in Agnes. I had all those custom chips in and out of the Amiga 2000 motherboard multiple times and all I can think is that I've got it mixed up when swapping the chips around testing until it finally worked at the time I must have thought it was Agnes whereas in reality the fault is within Gary but we're going to subject him to the same torture that Agnes got starting with a bit of a clean of the pins. So the pins of this old chip are, well, they are still a bit crusty, aren't they? Let's give them a quick going over with a fiberglass pen and see if it helps it. Well, that's about as clean as they're going to get. There is still a little bit of corrosion up in there. 
just in behind the legs of the pins where they're up against the chip. So I think it's only right that Gary here gets his vinegar bath the same way Agnes did. That should uh, eliminate any of that corrosion up in there. But let's see first of all if just cleaning these did the job. Now you might be able to tell that my cleaning of these has actually took the solder coating off those pins and they're down to the copper in several locations. So if we do manage to get this chip working again, I'll just quickly tin up all of those legs. So let's see if that did the trick. And no, still no signs of life. Time for a bath. Well, he's been in there for about half an hour. All the green is away. I'll just dry it off, give it a quick going over with a bit of IPA, and then we'll try it. Is that all it needed? Nope, it's still dead. I didn't expect that to magically fix it, but I suppose it was worth trying. Let's pull out the logic probe. I'm going to go right around this chip, and as I said earlier, let's look for anything that's floating. So, pin 1, low. Pin 2 is high. Pin 3 is floating. So we have 8 pins in total around Gary that are floating. Pin 3, 22, 33, 34, 37, 38, 46 and 47. Now 46 and 47 I am not particularly concerned about. Those are signals driving the motor in the floppy drive. 33, 34, 37 and 38. Those are address lines 17, 18, 21 and 22. But again, I'm not overly worried about that. Those are inputs to Gary coming from the CPU. And as I'll show you in a minute, the CPU itself is halted. So, if the chip has halted itself, its address lines very well may be floating. At least I think so anyway. Pin 22, CLKRD, well, that's to do with the real-time clock. So again, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But, pin 3, DEL, that's active low, that signal. And that one is of interest, because that is solely connected to U13 pin 1 output enable. So if Gary has lost connectivity on pin 3 internally due to corrosion, it can't get that signal out to U13 to enable that chip. The four of these here, the four bits of 74 series logic here, well they are ultimately responsible for communicating the RAM to the data bus. And so if that isn't working because of a fault in Gary, the whole machine isn't gonna work. If we look along the CPU, you can see that the data bus is dead, mostly. There's the CPU's clock, that's pin 15. 16, 17, that's the halt pin, active low, and the CPU is indeed halted. I just power cycle. You can see there is a flash of activity there for a second, and then the CPU just halts itself. It obviously cannot execute code, but is that because Gary cannot enable this piece of logic? So what I am going to do, let's pull the chip out, and I'm going to grind off the surface of it to expose pin 3. And I just want to see if there is corrosion internal on this chip. If there's potentially a break. And if it's something we could maybe fix. The best tool I have found for doing this is one of these. An electric nail file. And I think the reason that this works so well is that unlike say a Dremel, this thing when it's going, 
you can very easily stop it. So it's not really possible with this to apply too much force to the chip and cause any damage because if you apply too much force this will just stop turning. Despite that though the stone on the top of this is more than capable of grinding this away. So pin 3. Don't worry Gary, you won't feel a thing. I've ground that back just to the point where the leg turns the head down towards the middle of the chip where the silicone lives and as you can probably see there is nothing wrong with that internally whatsoever. It might just have been Gary's time to die. When it's in the socket this chip sits that way. The battery sort of lives over here on the board. Now the photos did show corrosion right around this chip but perhaps it was slightly more evident on this side, the side that faces towards where the battery lives. I am starting to think there's going to be nothing that we can really do here but I'm tempted to just grind off around all of those pins that were showing floating just to see if there's anything in particular on this side of the chip. So have you ever wondered what Gary looks like with his top removed? There's one there. Now we did lose two pins in the process and unfortunately the silicone got damaged as well. But that's more or less what a Gary looks like under the hood. See that shiny bit in the middle? That's the chip. The rest of it is just the package. So while all the parts on this board, all the ICs, they look big and chunky, well under the hood they are actually really small. But of course it doesn't hold a candle to what is produced these days. I don't really know what node silicone that would have been produced on, but it's probably huge in comparison to what they're doing nowadays. So I need a new Gary. I do have the one here but this needs to go into the 2000. I'm somewhat relieved that it's not Agnes because a replacement Gary can be had for about £10 whereas a replacement Agnes, well they're looking about 70 and I have seen some people asking as much as 120 for the Agnes 8375. So it was always going to be a bit of a long shot wasn't it? I mean what's the chances of it just being a bit of physical damage that we could fix inside a chip? If anything at least the fault was not in Agnes it's in Gary. I have ordered that £10 replacement chip and I suppose the one thing that we did get to see in this video was inside a Gary. My first ever attempt at decapping a chip. Uh, didn't exactly go to plan, although granted you're probably not meant to do it with an abrasive wheel attached to a cordless drill. So I'm not really sure what the point of this video was, but hopefully you enjoyed it nevertheless. If you did I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's still plenty more yet to come here on CRG and I'll see you next time.